All right, next up we have Meg Scott from San Francisco, California. <laughs> Judges, if you could make your way down. Meg, I will hand it off to you. Hi. Hello. Hi. Oh, great. Awesome. All right. We all settled? Okay. May I have my music, please? All right. We all good? Awesome. Time. Every year of competition, the most important question is, what coffee speaks to me? While searching for that answer, I've been drawn to a Kenyan coffee nearly every year. This year, I had the extraordinary opportunity of cupping an entire table of Kenyan coffees from the Othaya Cooperative, a Kenyan-run society known for its progressive business practices. The relationship between St. Frank Coffee Roasters and the Othaya Cooperative made this cupping table possible by directly linking the importer and producer, eliminating the need for an auction. Today, I want to bring you through my process by diving deep into my journey with this coffee. We'll be tasting through multiple screen sizes from the same producing mill, Karuthi, a factory located in the Nairi region of Kenya. Cupping so many Kenyan coffees was incredible, and that's where I discovered that Karuthi had differences in flavor according to screen size. I've chosen three screen sizes that best display everything this coffee has to offer, and I'll be pairing one with each course. First, we'll taste Karuthi AA, which I have chosen for its balance on its own. Second, we'll taste AB, which I have chosen for its lower density, higher solubility, and creaminess in milk. Lastly, in my signature drink, we'll be tasting the pea berry, the most concentrated form of this coffee. So let's get started on your espresso course. Karuthi is a field blend of SL28, SL34, and Ruby Ru 11. Grown at an elevation of 1,800 meters above sea level, this slows the cherry maturation, resulting in complex sugars, creating really beautiful and unique flavors. I'm brewing the Karuthi at 18 grams in, 40 grams out, in 27 seconds. This ratio creates a bigger extraction, in turn tempering some of the bright acidity, which balances and clarifies the flavors. In other words, it's the tastiest this way. Dropping the temperature of my espresso increases the clarity of flavors, so please make your visual evaluation, but wait to taste. I'm going to stir your coffee with frozen spoons so you have an ideal flavor experience. So 
So once again, judges, hold off on tasting so I can stir your coffee for you. This coffee has a juicy texture, a medium light weight, and a clean finish. You're going to taste pink grapefruit, black tea, and dried black currant. So once again, the tactile on this coffee is a juicy texture, a medium light weight, and a clean finish. And those flavor calls are pink grapefruit, black tea, and dried black currant. So go ahead and enjoy. Let's give Meg a big round of applause for her espresso course! As I made my way down the cupping table, I then cup the AB, the second largest screen size. This time, I tasted some richer aspects to the coffee, a creamy texture and some brown sugar sweetness, which I knew would be the perfect base for this milk course. When compared to the AA that you tasted in your first course, the AB is significantly less dense and more soluble which required me to change my extraction to 19 grams in, 36 grams out, in 25 seconds. I'll be making you cortados today with an organic, full-fat milk. This milk is from a dairy cooperative with grass-fed, free-range cows. These cows produce a rich, protein-heavy milk which brings out the natural sweetness of my espresso. I steam this milk to 130 degrees to achieve optimal sweetness. When I paired the AB with this milk, these two ingredients came together with the AB's brown sugar sweetness complementing the creaminess of the milk to then become flavors of brown sugar, cheese danish, and lemon shortbread. So once again, those flavor calls are brown sugar, cheese danish, and shortbread, lemon shortbread, sorry. No drinking instructions for these, just simply enjoy as I hand them out to you.
Cheers. All right, Enjoy. let's give Meg a big round of applause for her milk course. Cheers. Enjoy. Thank you. The last lot we are tasting would have been considered defective years ago. We're tasting the Caruthi pea berry. Pea berries are sorted like all the other cherries by density. So you don't even know it's just that single seed inside the cherry until the post washing process. And we all know the rumors. Some say that single seed gets all the nutrients a normal two seed cherry would get making the flavors super concentrated. This was proven on the cupping table. After tasting, I knew the concentrated flavors of the pea berry would work as the base of my signature drink. So to build your beverage, I brewed the pea berry with the same input and output as the espresso course, but I went coarser and faster, stopping at 22 seconds. This shot reduces bitterness, but enhances acidity. Now I'm taking it a step further and I'm going to filter my shots through an AeroPress. This is going to remove any insolubles, thus reducing viscosity and clarifying the espresso, making it the perfect texture for this beverage. The pea berry has some red fruit qualities, so I decided to taste an array of red fruit plums, cherries, pomegranates, but soon realized I needed a concentrated version of these fruits, just like the concentrated version of the pea berry. So I found this plum shrub, which harmonized with the pea berry's inherent sweetness and acidity. I'm using 24 grams of plum shrub. Next, to build structure and add complexity, I made a botanical tea concentrate, which is comprised of lemongrass, tarragon, and spearmint. I made this concentrate by brewing at a one to 10 ratio of tea to water. I'm using 18 grams of this concentrate. Now I'm adding all of my ingredients to this rapid cooling pitcher since these flavors are best experienced at a cool temperature. I chose this cooling pitcher instead of ice so as not to dilute the flavors and to maximize texture. So to open up all these concentrated flavors and add effervescence, I thought tonic water brings it all together. And what better tonic water to use other than elderflower to amplify my coffee's florality. So up front, you're going to get, you're going to get an aroma of lilac florality. Then as you sip this refreshing and effervescent beverage, you're going to taste tart green apple juicy blackberry, and mint in the finish. So once again, those flavor calls are tart green apple, juicy blackberry, and mint in the finish. Cupping this coffee was a reminder of the complexity of coffee. I had an extremely varied sensory experience while cupping, and I wanted to bring that same experience to you today, judges. I hope you enjoy. Cheers. Cheers. Enjoy.
I hope you've enjoyed this coffee as much as I have over the years. Thank you for embarking on this journey with me today. Time. All right, let's give Meg Scott a big round of applause. Meg, if you would come on over here. Hi. What a lovely routine and what a lovely cheer section you have going oh, on over I'm here. Oh, I'm very lucky, very yeah. lucky. I mean, it's not every day you get a couple of like custom banners as well as some of the I most agree. stellar people ever. I agree, I know. <laughs> it's great. Are there uh, some other people you would like to thank as well? Yeah, definitely. Um, I'd love to thank St. Frank. Kevin at St. Frank is awesome. He has invited me in just like their employee and loved their coffee so much. It's awesome. Jason is my coach and he is just amazing. We've been on so many coffee journeys together. Um, and I have to thank my boyfriend, Reef, who is a coffee genius and helps me with everything. And my best friend, Rachel. Awesome. Well, let's give Meg another big round of applause. All right, and we're going to take another quick break with a word from our sponsors.